Greetings to everyone who's watching me and listening to me right about now. I have another amazing word just for you. Remember that every single day I release these amazing words. These words are accompanied with powerful prophetic prayers. So my brothers and sisters, uh, if you need prayer, this is the right platform where I pray for each and every single individual. My brothers and sisters, I know some of you have been sending me your messages and I've been replying to your messages. If you'd want to send me a message, just send me a message through my email address and through my WhatsApp number. Remember, I reply all messages. So don't you be seated there and you think that I will not reply your message. I will reply your message and I will pray for you. The Bible says it clear that the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. There is a kind of prayer that when it is made, things will begin to work out the way you expected them to be. Some of you, your destinies have been stolen. Your dreams have been stolen by people. People have hijacked your blessings. That is why I come here to speak words of direction, words of encouragement, to exhort you, to pray for you, to pray with you, so that that which you have lost, you are able to recover. You are able to recover it. Brothers and sisters, those that are watching me, if you are just joining me right now, one thing that I'd like you to do is to share the live broadcast. Share this video. Let someone know about this good news. Let someone know that I'm here to pray with you. Let someone know that I'm here to speak to you. My brothers and sisters, if you're watching me for the very first time or if you have been watching me for a long time and you have not yet subscribed, I encourage you, I request you to subscribe because it's going to be for your own benefit. When you subscribe, you are going to receive videos. You will know when I am live. You will know when I have sent out a message and you will know when I'm praying for you. Some of you, the only thing you need for your deliverance is to have faith. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Believe in God that if someone prays for you, that breakthrough will happen. Believe in God that if someone speaks a word, you receive direction. Some of you are going to receive your breakthroughs right now. And there are some of you who have sent me your messages through my email address. And you have told me of how God has done miracles in your, in your life. Some of you, God has, has brought forth breakthroughs. Now, my brothers and sisters, it is good to see those that uh, join me and watch me. It is good to see uh, Shalonda. It is good to see you, Linda. It is good to see you, Rodriguez. It is good to see everyone that keeps on Moses. It's good to see you. It's good to see you, a connection to you. It is good to see those that are watching, even those that are not commenting. It is good to see you once again. It is good to see you. May God bless you. It is good to see you later. May God bless you. And remember, when you are consistent with the things of God, just like Linda Rodriguez and others like Shalonda, they are consistent. When you are consistent with uh, the things of God, your breakthrough will come quick. Some of you are so close to your breakthrough. I know some of you have been sending messages uh, to pray for you. I pray for you. Even when you don't send me that message, as long as you have sent me the message once, I will keep you in prayer. Even when you are live here, I will pray for you. I will uh, lift you up in prayer because this is what is important. This is what is important. Now, my brothers and sisters, just as you have seen the title, they are coming back 
with a wicked, bad report. There are people that have seen you. There are people that have examined you. There are people that you have sent out. And they are coming back with a bad report. They are coming back with a report of destruction. Yes, these are people who are enemies of progress. They are enemies of progress. So it is important to know these things. It is important to be careful who you trust. Trust God with all your strength, with all your might. Don't trust people because people will disappoint you. People will forsake you. Some of you, you have trusted your family for a long time and they have forsaken you. But I want to encourage you that God will not forsake you. God will always remember you because you are his child. The Bible says your woes are continually before him. Your woes are continually before him. So trust him in everything that you do. Trust God with your might. Trust God with everything that you have. Because he is a mighty God. He is a God of miracles. A God of wonders. A God that speaks a word and it will happen. I want to read to you a scripture. That uh, is going to bless you. The book of Isaiah chapter 49 verse 16. Let us go to the book of Isaiah and see what God has to say about you. I know there are people that have said wicked things about you. There are people that have conspired against you. There are people that have brought up a narrative. A report that is negative. They are always speaking negative. If you can write down the scripture, please write it down. Let people know about this powerful scripture. The book of Isaiah chapter 14. Let us start from verse 14. The book of Isaiah chapter uh, 49 actually. The book of Isaiah chapter 49 verse 14. I repeat. The book of Isaiah chapter 49 verse 14. The Bible clearly says, But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child, and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Your sons shall make haste. Your destroyers and those who laid you waste shall go away from you. Lift up your eyes. Look around and see. All these gather together and come to you. As I live, says the Lord, you shall clothe. You shall surely clothe yourselves with them all as an ornament and bind them as a bride does. What a powerful word. You see, some of you have a narrative like Zion. Zion reached at a point where it was fed up. It was delayed. So it said, the inhabitants of Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. That is what they thought. That is what the enemy make, made them think. That the Lord has forsaken them. And they said, my Lord has forgotten me. They had no revelation of who God was. Then God answered to them. God answered them and said, can a woman forget her nursing child? That was a question. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? 
surely they may forget, not they will forget. They may forget, yet I will not forget you. You see, God used an example of a woman. Those that have kids, God bless you. Those that have kids, you know what I'm talking about. God used an example of a woman. That he was trying to show that it is impossible for a woman for, to forget her nursing child. It is impossible. Yes, there are some women that are diabolic. There are some women that get into light afflictions. And they forget their nursing ch children or kids. But most women have it in their heart that they cannot forget their nursing child. They will always have compassion no matter how the child looks like. Whether the child is born with deformities. Whether the child is born with um, complications. The woman will love her child because it's part of her. It came out of her. So God was trying to tell you that he is a father, a loving father. That is the relationship he has with you. That he cannot forget you because he created you. He cannot forsake you because you are part of him. You were made in his image and likeness. That is what the Bible says. Verse 16 says, see, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your woes are continually before me. Maybe you are looking at somewhere else. You are so caught up with your problems. You are so caught up with a storm. You are so caught up in trying to please some people. You are so caught up in trying to fit in groups. God is telling you, see. Some of you are not seeing right. You are focusing on the media. You are focusing on social media platforms. You are focusing on your co-workers. God is telling you to position yourself to see. He's telling you, see, there is something there. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Do you know that God has inscribed you on the palms of his hands? He's always looking at you. The Bible says, one scripture says, Who is man that you are mindful of? The writer was asking a question because he had investigated in these things. He had looked in the matter and he saw that God is so mindful of man. Do you know what that means? That the mind of God is full of man. He's so mindful that even every step that he makes, he watches him. God watches over you. Some of you, if it was not by God's grace, you would not be alive right now. Do you know how many people are in the ICU, intensive care units? Do you know how many people are struggling to breathe? For you, you have oxygen. Thank God that you can breathe. Thank God that you did not die. Thank God, even when there was a serious problem that hit the entire world, God preserved you. That is a miracle. It is not something for granted. You were among the chosen that you can see me right now. That you can hear me. You see, the Bible says that you are the light of this world. God has chosen you to be the light of this world. Some of you have a healing gift in you, but you have not yet used it. You are so afraid of people. You are so afraid of what people would say. You are focused on your problems. This word is for someone. I can feel it. God wants you to go out and start healing people. But until now you are seated. That breakthrough that you are waiting for. For it to happen. God desires you to first do his work. And as you are obedient, as you are ministering to the people, whatever sect it is, whatever our um, uh, works of life it is, whether it is in your workplace, whether it is in your neighborhood, you can start with one person. It doesn't matter. You don't need a big crowd. A lot of people are waiting for God to give them big crowds. 
It may be your businesses. God wants you to start with one, two people. It may be one person. It may be no one listening to you. But speak the goodness of the God. If people cannot listen to the gospel, go out and preach to the trees. They may call you crazy, brother. They may say you are out of your mind, sister. But you know that which you speak of. The Bible says it clear. That creation eagerly awaits for the manifestation of the sons of God. Do you know that the entire creation is awaiting for you? Do you know that the world is waiting for you? There are different groups of people that are waiting for you. There are those that are waiting to strike you down. There are those that are waiting for you to fall down. There are those that are waiting to pass on a negative report, a wicked report to others, to laugh at you, to mock you. There are those that are waiting for your downfall. All the entire lives, they have waited for this day that you will fall down to your knees. And there is creation. There are those that are waiting for you to help them out. There are those that are waiting for you to speak a word. Some of you are so powerful. There's a gift in you that God has blessed. Thank God that of Jesus. Thank God that you have Jesus. But now you have to do. Jesus says that greater works shall you do than this. If you have not done those greater works, it is now time to do them. Don't try to put yourself on pressure. Just do it in obedience to God. Because obedience is better than sacrifice. Just keep walking. If, let me say you pray for someone and he does not get healed. Don't put the blame on you. I repeat, don't put the blame on you. Do the praying. Command that demon to live. And God will do the, the rest. If it is not working out, one thing that I encourage you to do is to go back to the scriptures. The scriptures are our manual. Just like you would buy a TV set. Whether it is a flat screen. I'm just giving you an example. Now the manufacturer of that flat screen will bring a remote control. That remote control controls the stations you watch on that TV. Now, besides that remote control, there's a, a manual. There's a small book, a small pamphlet, so to say. A small instruction book that has instructions on how to operate the machine. It tells you what you ought to do and not to do. It tells you in what conditions and temperatures you should store that flat screen, that TV. Now, there are people that when they buy the flat screen, they go by their experience. They go by people's words. They just begin operating the flat screen. They don't read the manual. And yet the manual, in most cases, says, do not operate this instrument. Do not operate this machine before you read all the guidelines. So they mess up with everything. Do you know there are functions... I'm speaking to someone. There are functions on that remote control, your remote control of that TV that you don't know about and they are written down in the manual. So read the manual. The manual is like the word of God. God is the, like the manufacturer. He has sent forth his word. He wants you to read the word. They are Portions, scriptures that talk about healing that you have never read about. You are crying so much. You are crying about that back pain. And yet God wants you to speak to command to that back pain. There are scriptures that talk about healing. That will open up your entire world view. Some of you have God. You, the perception of God is in a different way. The way you, you think God speaks is in a different way. And when God speaks to you in a way that you are not accustomed to, you will call it witchcraft. When God speaks to you in a way that you are not accustomed to, you may call it, uh, you, may see, you may think it's, it's a demon speaking to you. You may think it's a spirit. 
knowledge is important. The Bible says that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Some of you may be receiving things. You may be seeing visions and you may think that it's the enemy trying to play around with your mind. And yet God is trying to introduce you to a realm. God is trying to introduce you to another dimension. Some of you, God has opened up your ability. You have the ability to smell things. You can smell something that not, not, uh, uh, not everyone can smell. All of a sudden, you, you are there, you start, you start smelling uh, certain things. God could be ushering you into the prophetic. You start smelling smoke. You start smelling food. God could be speaking to you in that way using your nose. Some of you start hearing words. You think you're going insane. No. It is time to know how God speaks to you. Because God has not forsaken you. Some of you, there's a lady that uh, uh, sent me a message. He says, oh, man of God, pray for me. I, I smell this thing in, in, in my environment. I, 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 it's like uh, I hear voices. I see things. And she wants me to pray for her for that thing to live. And yet God could be ushering her into the prophetic realm. Do you see that? So I tell people to read the scriptures for themselves. You see Samuel? Have you read about the story of Samuel? Of how he was called by God? And God called him. Now, notice that the voice of Samuel sounded as though it was the voice of Eli, the priest. So the little boy Samuel runs to uh, Eli, thinking that Eli had spoken to him. When he goes to Eli, Eli says, I've not spoken to you. The boy goes back to sleep. He hears the voice again. He goes back to Eli. He thinks Eli has spoken to him. Eli says, I've not spoken to him. Now, Eli perceived. He used the spirit of discernment to discern that God was calling the little boy. And Eli said that, go back and sleep. When you hear the voice again, this is how you have to answer. Answer in this manner, here I am, Lord. Speak to me, your servant is listening. That is how Samuel was called by God. Now the Bible says that Samuel ministered in the house of the Lord. I'm just paraphrasing. In the temple. But he did not know God. He did not know God. Do you know you can minister in the house of God? You can worship God. You can uh, uh, pray, but you don't know God. No doubt that Samuel was gifted. He was a prophet. The Bible says that none of Samuel's words fell to the ground. That when Samuel would speak a word, I'm telling you, it will come to pass. Words that came out of the mouth of Samuel, it was as though God had spoken. That is how powerful Samuel was. That is how powerful his gift was. But when he was a young boy, he ministered to God, but he did not know God. Some of you, you are still young in the things of God. I'm not saying physically. Physically, you may be old. Some of you could be 50, 60, 70, 40, 30, 20. You, you could be of age. But in the spiritual realm, you could be trying to uh, develop your gift. But you may not know God. But when God reveals himself to you, you will know him just as he knows you. So it is important to know the things of God. It is important to meditate on the word of God. Don't just utter out things that you have no knowledge about. Don't just assume things. We do not go by assumptions. This is not an hypothesis. No. These are things that are proven. 
and they have worked. So Zion said that God had forgotten him, and yet God had not forgotten him. The Bible says in verse 17, Your sons shall make haste, your destroyers, and those who laid you waste shall go away. I'm telling you right now, your destroyers shall go away. Your destroyers shall go away. Your mockers shall be no more. Because God is going to do it for you. Someone, God is going to raise him up. Someone who's watching me, God is going to remember you. God is going to remember you. The Bible says it clear. Lift up your eyes. Look around and see. And all these gather together and come to you. As I live, says the Lord, you shall surely clothe yourselves with them all as an ornament and bind them as a bride does. Lift up your eyes from that place of pain. Lift up your eyes. Some of you have lost self-esteem. You have lost confidence. The enemy has found a way to speak to you. Some of you hear the voice of the enemy more than you hear the voice of God. These are true facts. You are so accustomed to what people are saying about you. You are so inclined to what people are saying about you. It bothers you when people speak about you. Don't be bothered. Always get to know what God is saying about your life. Don't be found among gossipers. Gossip is not good. Don't even join them. When you find people gossiping about someone, don't join them. Just pray for those people. Prayer is what is important. Brothers and sisters, this word is for someone. You are watching me right now. You have been frustrated at people. You have been frustrated at things. Things have not been going the way you expect them to be. But I want to encourage you that the law that brought you this far, the law that brought you this far, will rescue you. We serve a God that is mighty. That no matter what negative report has been portrayed about you, you are going to come out. I repeat, you are going to come out. It doesn't matter how many people have surrounded you. How many problems have come into your life, I'm telling you. God bless you, Shalonda. God bless you, Leah Fields. God bless everyone that is commenting. If you're watching me for the very first time, brothers and sisters, keep on sharing this word. Keep on liking the video. Comment. I'm going to pray for people. I know some of you have been sending your prayer requests. But I'm going to pray for you because God is going to do something amazing in your lives. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's what the scripture says. He never changes. He never fails. He is a faithful God. He is too faithful to fail you. He can never fail you. The Bible says it clear that God is not like a man that he should lie. They are men that have lied to you. Some of you have entered relationships where people have forsaken you. People are doing witchcraft against you. But as we pray today, we are going to break the source of witchcraft. We are going to disorganize the camp of the enemy. This time they are in, in trouble. And remember, every single day I pray for people. If you are joining me for the very first time, let me know in the comment section that I'm here for the very first time. That I'm watching you for the very first time. And as you are watching me, and as you are commenting, God is going to bless you. God bless those that are commenting. Even those that are not commenting. I know you are watching me right now. You could have reasons that why you're not commenting. But God knows you. God understands you. You see, God can locate you. God can deal with your problem. Some of you, it has been so much stress. You have moved from place to place. It is hard for you to trust people. Because of what people have done to you. Some of you have gone to churches. Where church leaders have used you. Misused you. 
They have spoken words that have hurt you to the extent that you have left the church. But I want to encourage you that God is going to raise you up. God is going to raise you up. Let us read a scripture that is from the book of Numbers chapter 17. I repeat, Numbers chapter 13 verse 17. Numbers chapter 13 verse 17. If you are, are there, you can write down that, that scripture so that people can really get to understand the whole entire scripture. Numbers chapter 13 verse 17 to 33. I repeat, Numbers chapter 13 verse 17 to 33. It is going to be a long scripture and I want you to bear with me as we read the scripture. Uh, write, bring down your notebooks. If you are writing on your iPads, on your tablets, on your phones, write down the scriptures because they are things that God is communicating to you. Personally to you. Take this message as a personal message. Don't as a message of the whole entire group. It is talking to you. <clears throat> the Bible says, Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and say to them, Go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or not, be of good courage and bring some good fruit of the land. Now the time of the season of the first fruit, ripe grapes. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob near the entrance of Hamath. And they went up through the south and came to Hebron, Amihan, Sesha, Talmai, the descendants of Anak were there. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. You see? The Bible says, I'll first end there. And I'll continue. The Bible says that Moses sent out spies to go and spy the land of Canaan. He told them. You see, God was ready to give them that land. But they needed to go and spy. You see, sometimes before you go to some places, you have to go out and look at the place. Don't just enter locations and I fully say that I here is where I'm relocating. Some of you, God is moving you up to another location, another state. But before you go and say that, yes, this is the state, go out and investigate. What is the environment of that condition, of that, uh, that state? Because some of you, you may enter into a state that is full of rapists. You may enter into a state that is full of murderers, gunshots. And God does not want you to be connected to that state, that environment. Before you go and look for a house, go out and investigate. Because there are some houses that before you even entered in, there were witches that used to do witchcraft in them. So the atmosphere itself is contaminated. No wonder the moment you enter that location, your life began going down. Some of you don't know. The moment you rented that house, problems. You had problems at your workplace, problems in your marriage. It's because it could be because of an environment. You see, the reason as to why environments are, are important is that, I'll give you an example. Jesus was getting ready to heal a man. Listen to me and listen to me very well. 
when Jesus Christ of Nazareth was getting ready to heal a man. The Bible says, as a prayer phrase, he called the man and walked with him out of that city, out of that environment, and healed him outside the environment. And he told him not to go back. There was a reason. Sometimes, maybe, the reason that is delaying, the problem that is why you are delaying in your breakthrough is because of an environment. It is because of the people you are surrounded with. You may not talk to them on a daily basis, but that atmosphere is being held by a strong man. There are principalities that are governing. Don't you know what the Bible says? That we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against rulers of darkness, against wicked forces, you are not fighting against flesh and blood, but you are fighting with principalities. Your war is against principalities. Now the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand the evil day. I'm telling you the evil day is coming. Some of the evil day has already arrived on you. No matter what it's, it is, put on the whole arm of God. And when you put on the whole arm of God, you are going to stand. Now the book of Ephesians, thank you for sharing that, that scripture, for those that are sharing that word. The book of Ephesians, Ephesians talks about what is in the arm of God. I'll give you a, 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 just a, a few examples. The helmet of salvation. The sword, which is the word of God. The shield, which is faith. So put on, even there's even the blessed bread. There are even, there's even a belt and shoes. So put on the whole armor of God. Now Moses told them to go up to the mountains. And see what the land is like. You have to go and see. Don't just send people. Go and see. If you are sending people, send those that you trust. Moses sent, sent spies because he trusted them. See what the land is like. Whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak. Or few or many. You have to know this. Are the people who dwell in that land strong? Are the people who do in that land weak? Are they narcissists? Are they evil? Are they diabolic? Are they Christians? You have to go and see. Are they good or bad? This is what Moses told them. And even told them, whether the land is rich or poor, go to lands that are rich, not poor. Go to a land that will make you profit. Some of you want to start up businesses. But maybe the, the location where you are selling your products cannot fully accept your products. They are poor. They are stingy. They don't like you. If it has failed in one state, go to another state. Try out the same businesses. This is how big corporations started up. Location is important. Even those that are starting up businesses, you know. Where are your clients? Who are your clients? What is your niche? These are the things you ought to do. So that you don't struggle in businesses. Who is your target group? What is the age bracket of your target group? Who are you targeting? Are you targeting students? Are you targeting Gen Z? Are you targeting Gen X? Whatever generation, what is the generation you are targeting? Who are your clients? What do they like? Look at the interests of people. What, do they re what are they really interested in? Don't sell out something. Don't create a product that people ne are never interested. Someone even said, there's someone who said that if you cannot consume your own product, then it's not good for the market. I'm just paraphrasing. 
if you cannot consume, if you cannot, there are people that produce coin products, but they cannot even consume them. They have not tested them. So Moses sent them to a land to spy. And even told them to be of good courage. When you're going out to apply for a job, be of good courage. Have faith in God that the moment you step in that job, you will get it. My first job was in Malaysia. And when I went to apply for that job, of course I went with my CV. My CV was not strong enough. That time I was a student. I was a university student. I had no experience. There are people that came with experience. I was there without experience. I believed in God that I would get a job. I had faith in God that this was my time. When I went for the interview, we did not even speak about my, my experience. We did not speak about what I, I, I was able to do. I remember it clearly. It was an Italian man. He looked at me. He knew exactly where I'm coming from, the country I'm coming from. He told me, next time, come back for the job. That is it. I had got the job. The interview just took just a few minutes. We didn't even talk about work. We talked about something else. We talked about my country. And said, next time, come back for the job. That is favor. But for you to attain that favor, have faith in God. These scriptures that we read, meditate on them day and night. Meditate on them. Meditate on them. So that you may know exactly what you ought to do. You see? So that you may know exactly what you ought to do. The words are life. Now let us go to the same scriptures of Numbers chapter 13. But let us go to verse 28 and see what report they brought back. Numbers chapter 13 verse 28. Let us see the report these men brought back when they went to spy the land of Canaan. What report was given to them, to Moses? <laughs> Number 28 says, Verse 28, I mean, says, Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified. And very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hatites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people. For they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report. Of the land which they had spied out. Saying the land through which we have gone as spies. Is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Do you see that? The people that went to spy the land, they brought back a bad report. A very negative report. A discouraging report. Some of you, the doctor has brought back a bad report. Your colleagues are always negative about you. They are always trying to induce fear in you. It's a very negative report. 
The spies says, said that the land, the people who dwell in that land are very large. And moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak. The descendants of Anak were giants. They were strong. The, the Bible says that they, they, they even said that they were stronger than we. That is a negative report. Very negative. But I love what Caleb, Caleb said. Caleb did not believe in the negative report. He didn't believe. He wanted to go out and fight them. He didn't believe in the report. Be like Caleb. When the doctor brings back a negative report, yes, it may, it, may, it may seem to be true. But you have to believe in what God says about you. The Bible says by his stripes we are healed. You are healed. That means healing has already taken place. You, what you have to do is to speak to your body. Speak to that condition. Command it to respond to the word of God. Because the word of God can make you well. The Bible says that he sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from the afflictions. So Caleb was a man of valor. These spies had a way of introducing a negative report. They said the land through which we have gone to as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. What kind of land? Eh, listen. What kind of land devours its inhabitants? That means there was more to spiritual than it is in a physical. Some of you, the land you are in, devours its inhabitants the land you are in has been devouring your first fruits the land you are in has been devouring your breakthrough the location you are in has been devouring your faith it has been introducing fear all what they talk about is fear all what they talk about is this and that and that and this they never talk about good identify are you where to are you able to identify that the land you are in is the problem? The location you are in is what is causing those problems. The family you are located, you are connected to is the problem. Some of it is a generational curse. It is a generational curse, I repeat. And the Bible says, all the people whom we saw in, the, in it are men of great stature. Not some people. It's not that there was only two people whereby you can uh, deal with them and that is okay. It was all the people were men of great stature. Some of you, they are men of great stature. Women of great stature. Wicked women that have come up against you. And all of them are, direct, are, are targeting you. Ask yourself, why would all people who, th who, who call themselves strong target you. Why would they fight you at once? That shows that how powerful you are. You are not a weakling, brothers. Strong people don't fight weaklings. They don't challenge weaklings. I've already said this about the story of David. That uh, many people miss out on that story. They miss out on a great revelation. You see, when you're reading the story of David, uh, David's encounter with Goliath, in your mind you may think that David was a weakling. But the reality is, David was not a weakling. In the physical, he looked to be weak. He looked to be small. Goliath, he looked to be the, the stronger. But when they fought, David was able to defeat Goliath. It looked like a battle that is a war that is uh, uh, not realistic. How can a small boy fight against a giant like Goliath? But you see, power is not measured by the physical. The true power is the spiritual. Bible says you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come. You shall receive power. It doesn't say that you're going to get six packs, Ebs. 
No. It doesn't mean that you are going to uh, supernaturally get a, a bi monster biceps and triceps. No. The true power is in the spiritual realm. You will find a man that is so thin, but is powerful. Before I, I even continue with the story of David, look at Samson. People may think that Samson really had biceps or triceps. You see, the Philistines and the enemies of Israel, they were so confused. Do you know why Delilah kept on asking what's the source of Samson's strength? Because Samson was a mystery. Probably Samson was a thin man. You see, God can use something that people have despised and he makes it strong. A lot of people imagine Samson to be, have, uh, to be like, have you heard of a story called Hercules? These mythologies, I think it's a Greek mythology. I don't believe in those myth mythologies. But it's also a story of a man who was strong. Samson was even looked, uh, he was not even, uh, may not even have had those biceps. Probably did not go to the gym. That's why you see Delilah kept on asking. Find out. The physicians hired Delilah to find out the source of his strength. What really makes this man strong? Because on the outside, he may not have, have looked as strong. But in the inside, he was strong. Now, back to the story of David. David was mocked on the battleground. Goliath even laughed at him. He mocked his God. But David had a testimony. This is what David said. I have fought a lion and a bear. I have killed them. Who is this Philistine? Who is this Philistine that comes up and mocks my God? David, you see, before you fight Goliath, a lot of people want to go and just fight Goliath in their lives. Before you go and fight Goliath, before you can defeat Goliath, have you defeated the lion? Have you defeated the bear? I'm not speaking about physical lions. No. These are spiritual things. Understand this. The Bible says it clear that the enemy moves around. The devil must moves around like a, a lowering lion. Seeking for whom to devour. He wants to devour you. Daniel also was able to overcome the lion. The lion's den. So my brothers and sisters, it is important. Before you get a testimony, go, have to go, you have to go through a test. A lot of people want to get testimonies. They are glad about testimonies. But have you gone through a test? You see, even Jesus went through a test. The Bible says he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. To what? To be tested. If Jesus can be tested, what about you? Many of you have been tested. All of you have been tested, actually. But you may not know. Are you able to pass the test? The Bible says in, the, in, in, in Numbers, chapter 13, verse 33. There we saw giants. The descendants of Anak came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. The Bible says they saw giants. And they recognized that these were the descendants of Anak. <laughs> They knew that these giants were so huge. The Bible says we were like, not we, 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 we are grasshoppers. They say we were like, they were just narrating, narrating. We were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. How do you look at yourself? Because how you look at yourself can become a reality in the, in, the, in the sight of your enemies. Some of you have looked at yourself as weaklings. Before people can say that you are weaklings, you have already pronounced judgment about on yourself. 
the Bible says that they spies. They said that they were like grasshoppers in their own sight. And so they were in the sight of the giants. Don't despise yourself. Don't despise yourself. The Bible says, let no one despise you. That's a book of, uh, I think, First Timothy. Let no one despise your youth. Let no one, it doesn't matter who it is. Whether it is your acquaintance, it is your family. Let no one despise your youth. But give attention to reading. To this reading, give attention to it. To exhortation. And do not neglect the gift that is in you. Don't neglect the gift. Do you know you are gifted? Do you know that? Or you are just hearing it for the first time? You know, some of you may be just hearing it for the first time. I've always talking, uh, spoken about this. That God gave you gifts. Just like someone uh, would... I know some of you, uh, you, when you were young, you used to receive Christmas gifts. You, just like someone would receive a Christmas gift or a birthday gift. But those gifts are inferior. Yes, they make you feel well. I'm glad they do. They make you feel valued. But the best gift there is, is Jesus. The Bible says it clear that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves you so much that it required him to send his son, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is powerful. A lot of people know that scripture. But they don't know the power behind the scripture. That even if you were the only one left on planet earth. Do you know that Jesus would have come and died for you? Jesus would have died for you. So as you celebrate. Celebrate Jesus. I know uh, there are a lot of things uh, to deal with Christmas. Um, a doctrine that is God. Uh, has, has gone out about Christmas. Uh, Christian Chris, Christmas is not is a pagan uh, way of doing things, but um, of course it is. Uh, but uh, what you have to do is uh, I'm not encouraging you to celebrate Christmas as the world does, uh, but use that day to preach the word. As people are celebrating it as, of course, you, some of you know the origins of Santa Claus and how it was originated and all those things. But what you have to do, forget about the celebration of the pagan day. But on that day, evangelize. Talk to someone about Jesus. Yes, some of them are celebrating it as though they don't know. Just talk about Jesus. Forget about what people are celebrating about. Use it as a day, a day of evangelizing. Tell someone about the love of God. All right? Brothers and sisters, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of those that are coming back with a bad report. A lot of people are targeting you. They are looking at you. These are men and women are wicked in higher positions and some of you it is very hard to know them very hard to identify them but through by the spirit of god that resides in you you are, you are going to discern these things god is going to give you a spirit of discernment and we are about to pray for you I know some of you have been sending your, your, your prayer requests in the comment section. You have been telling me to pray for you. Some of you have pain. Some of you need restoration. Some of you need a breakthrough. Some of you need um, a kingdom spouse. And some of you, you just need direction. You just need your eyes, your spiritual eyes to be opened. 
to see the things of God. I'm going to pray for you. And we are now in the time of prayer. So if you have been sending in your prayer requests, begin to send them right now. Because I'm praying. I'm going to pray for you. Position yourself. I'll just give you some time for those that uh, if you are in a position where or in a location where it is very hard for you to pray and you're not comfortable, I'm giving you some time to uh, move to a location, to move to a, an area, whether it's your prayer closet, it could be outside in a park. Don't just move in places that are unsafe. Make sure that, that place is safe for you because your, your safety is also important. If uh, the place you are in is not really comfortable, uh, go to a place that is comfortable because it's important that you receive your breakthrough right about now. And I'm just waiting for you. As you are typing in your prayer request, begin to type in your prayer request. And um, let us see what God is going to do. Believe that God is going to do something amazing in your life. Forget about yesterday. Forget about today. Forget about tomorrow. Think about God. Focus on God. That's right. Focus on God. Focus on the goodness of God. Focus on how God has saved you. Some of you would have died a long time ago. Some of you right now, the enemy could have been planning. Some of you have a few months. Some of you have a few years on planet Earth. Focus on God. Pray that God uses you. Some of you just, you need to pray for your years to be extended. Yes, it doesn't matter what the doctors have said. Don't agree with the doctor's report. He may have said that you have a few years, a few months, a few weeks. Don't agree. Just focus on God. Focus on the goodness of God. That is right. Focus on the goodness of God. Envision heaven. Imagine you are in heaven. Yes, yes. Imagine you are in heaven. The angels around you. Singing and worshipping God. Look at the trees. Look at Jesus. Imagine Jesus walking close to you. Just imagine, imagine Jesus touching your heart. Taking away that pain. Imagine yourself walking again. Imagine yourself doing what you could not do. Just imagine Jesus touching your heart. Touching your lungs. Touching your kidneys. Touching your mind. Just imagine him. Imagine Jesus right next to you. Mm. Look at the flowers. Just begin to pray. Lift up the name of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for everyone that is watching me right about now. I thank you for their lives. That you know each and every situation that they are going through. Every circumstance that has taken a hold of them. I destroy the powers of witchcraft. Each and every negative, wicked report that has been presented to them. Each and everything that is targeting their bodies, their minds. In the name of Jesus, I speak to it right now. I send fire right now. Consume the things of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, every food that you have been eating in your dreams. Every diabolic poisonous substance that has been coming to you. Out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. Receive power in the name of Jesus. Every form of frustration, delay that has come up upon you. I decree and declare that there shall be no more delay. In the name of Jesus. I speak to the sick right now. I pray for you, Shalonda. In the name of Jesus. That your eyes will see the things of God. That your eyes will be open in the name of Jesus. I pray for Timothy right now. That he shall be restored. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, Linda Rodriguez. Connection to Sarah. La Prosanda Makato Prahandama. Mekoda Akedo Hobra. Begin to pray. Zuda Lakato Pra. You are rising up in the name of Jesus, son. You are rising up in the name of Jesus. Poverty shall not be your portion. La bosa katala hanoma. Legedo kalo shidava. Me brosana me keto preda. Legestava akane membra. Zuva la kato topra. Me graso no manglasa. Me prosita le katova. 
Oja la kanaminda masandala. Loza la pala kadoshi na maunda. Liga zombra akaten. Begin to pray. Begin to lift the name of the Lord. Zodolo vadalma. Migado shita lahova. Mitobra akanemembra. Zino masandala kadova. Zoprik akato. Sikati ikesova. Mikadlos ekenema. Pale sweet okonoma. Bilakano mosipla kasova. Every form of witchcraft that has been coming up at night. That has been affecting you every area of your body that has been affected and been subject to witchcraft in the name of Jesus I command that witch to live right now I said fire 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 in the name of Jesus everyone that held up a meeting to destroy you right now confusion in the name of Jesus their camp will be confused they shall not see you in the name of Jesus they shall flee Raprosata la canoma, metolo prasidova, micronombra acatebra, zubro sacaledo, micris otomandala, poloso acanemendo. La gazodro otalava, microsapra akatedo, micros e prosu, cicladosh apramambra, cicatopra akede, sombra kativa, microsotomembra, sobri et a caloja, licratos e manandro, zovi e clado. Pala so, me prokita ala pri, le krehezo matalago, la gashoto plaketoma, le gris e kanamam, makledos e kedoshta, le krosim proksanama, bruza la maunda la kadoga, mi klasoto pra akate pro, masila so, begin to pray, begin to pray for your jobs, and begin to pray for your mind. Some of you, your minds have been attacked so heavily, your minds have been attacked so heavily by the enemy, I, by the enemy, he has been attacking your your thoughts in the name of Jesus and bring your thoughts to the obedience of Christ in the name of Jesus and every spiritual attack every spiritual dream that the enemy has been using to attack you right now fire in the name of Jesus and fire in the name of Jesus Losanda la keto pro me sombra akasova. Someone is believing in the healing of his relative. In the name of Jesus, uh, that it shall be so. You shall be healed. Your relative shall be healed. They shall come out of jail in the name of Jesus. Prison shall not hold them up. Prison shall not hold them in the name of Jesus. Mala sabro sanganama misopra aketo prasa in the name of Jesus. There shall be no false accusations. You shall win that court case in the name of Jesus. They shall not take your land. They shall not take your houses. They shall not take your marriage. The enemy shall not take your children in the name of Jesus. You shall have your children in the name of Jesus. You shall have your kids. Mangro sanda mota lake. Ego mambro satapiri, pile costa makalamba, mambro chic eketoproi, sadolo sanabre, kareke sotono mombra, le krahazo itopra, la pros ikanando, sikatopra akadesho, mikatandro sidala, pilo sui akane, loja la kareuvra, me tolo kaprasada, le kosi pro sinamambra, ze loja la kedova, miklatozi makatambra, sandosh italoko, healing is happening right now, restoration is happening happening right now deliverance is happening right now i decree and declare healing right now i decree and declare miracle money in the name of jesus your finances will increase in the name of jesus your credit score will go up your credit score will be good your credit score will be good in the name of jesus lepro sambro kosinindra sidla kado sanamambra sando sikatebra siklodo vasamba you are settling your debts and you shall be debt free i decree and declare be debt free debt free in the name of jesus you'll be made whole in the name of jesus i speak healing to your body from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet you are healed going out and you are healed coming out no attack will come next to you no witchcraft will attack you Zebru sakam, pale prosito mombra, sekate bro sinanambra, zuj aprahadoga, leg esenemendo, pale asanamambra, zopela katelezo, siklahodo makatovra, zebruj akanembro, zila kato prianda, li kato prasateloko, pele gri esenembra, zuva la kate prezenemenda, bilo sopra kadishtova, miglezo no manda laketo, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to lift the name of the Lord. 
Lord. Oh, yes, it is working. Some of you, the power is hitting you. The power is about you. The power, some of you are feeling a tingling in your body. The power of God is in you. The power of God is working. Yes, it is working. Begin to test out things that did not work. Begin to walk. Begin to walk. Begin to stretch yourself. Someone is getting healed of back, back problems. Someone is getting healed of cancer. Someone is getting healed of kidney stones. Someone is getting healed of blood issues. Oh, yes, high blood pressure is living in the name of Jesus. La prosanda macrizona. Ego brada makatobra, siketobra akanembra, silosh alevi, siklado masandaro, valo griso no mangro, soto la caprozuma, li griso pra habdana, plagedo fra sane mingra, pieso pra caninombra, si koto placate prosa, mi proca adidosum, isola osoma. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. It is working. Oh yes, all things are working for your God. Oh yes, it is happening. You may not feel it, but it is happening in the spiritual realm. Um, the enemy is in confusion. There is fire in the camp of the enemy. La calo sombra, miketo prechedo. Lijo do bangala koto preyana. Le prosake ne mendo masandala kebra. Palo kopra aside. Pile kendo masandala kova. Sikle jud osanendra. Zuvoja la kebro. Sikle do masibro kova. Mimbro kana masida la hambra. Ziklo shanda li dopra. Every attack of the enemy. I cancel it now. I reverse the effects of the enemy. I reverse the works of the enemy. The seeds of the enemy. Each and everything of the enemy that he has in you. I am Lock it out. I remove it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Paro sikle eno mombro sova. Pilo kizo prasa kedo pra. Mando pra kedo pra. Le dosh akanime. Le kotov akadov. Mandro shi. Ogaman anda la kalosha. Big la koza make prosa. Mikla mombra katidova. Le kine mendosa. Le keto prosa nama. Le kato prisonoma. You cannot be disappointed. You can never fail. Because if God is for you, who can be against you? If God says yes, who can say no? Who can say no? Le keto prosa. Mikoto bra kadesho. Miklova akato. We are left with a few minutes. Begin to be serious with the things of God. Begin to lift up the name of the Lord. Because there is something that you may not understand right now. But you will thank God later. You may not comprehend what you are feeling right now. But you are going to thank God later. There is a testimony attached. Le gedo bra si kenem bra katova, po zizo kotobre, le kazova, mangrado si tela, le proste katilo bra, le koshido si namandro, si vrosht akaneme, le gaze oke de bra, si kapri ekenemendo, mando si clova, vizova la kaprosa, igana manda la kadebla, zigada rosa kateflosa, pele koto makale goza, la ambrokidoma, migla bruisa, mika no nandla. Mika do brosido, mika lo shataledo, palo kuvosa, mika neke do shida, bikla bros akanaen, pros la kenoma, mingre satakum. Things are happening right now. There is a shift that is happening right now. Somebody is rising up. Somebody, your spiritual eyes are being opened. Somebody is being lifted up right now. In the name of Jesus, there are doors that are opening. Keys that are being presented to you. La Prosal, favor is coming your way. You are going to be favored in the sight of all men and in the sight of God. Pale Prosal, destiny handle paths are coming your way in the name of Jesus. Poro Prison, La Lake do Bra, Zido Opla Eke de Brosa, Lizo Valake Noma, Le Grizo Lovazateloma, Prozo Lake Noma. Father, thank you, Jesus. For every individual that has joined this session, I pray that as they go to sleep, that you are with them. Those that are at work, may you help them, Father. Every form of destruction, I remove it of their life. Every form of disappointment, it shall not happen. Calamity shall not strike them. Things shall not disappoint them. I speak destiny helpers into their lives. 
open doors into their lives. In the name of Jesus. Healing from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Knowledge of the things of God. Thank you, Jesus, for your doing it. Thank you, Father, for the lady you have lifted up. For the man you are lifting up right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray this, believing and trusting. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it is a good time uh, to spend in the presence of the Lord. Of course, I have come to the end of this amazing word. I believe that you are blessed and you will never be the same again. Never be the same again. Thank you for those that have watched till the end. And if you have just joined in as this message is ending, one thing I'd like you to do is uh, go back to the beginning of the message and rewatch it right from the beginning till the end. And God is going to bless you. A miracle is on your way. There's a miracle with your name attached on it. There's a breakthrough with your name attached on it. It is happening. It is happening. Also, if there is anyone who wants to be a blessing to this ministry through their giving, of course you can do so through my PayPal. My PayPal is in the About section. It is always in the About section of this channel. And if you have other ways in which you would like to give to this ministry, you can do so by sending me a message through my email address or my WhatsApp number. There are many ways to give. Many ways. There's Western Union, MoneyGram, World Remit, and God will bless you. Don't say that your seed or your giving is too small. Whatever you have, whatever you can, and God will bless you. My brothers and sisters, I've always encouraged you to keep sharing this word, like the video, introduce someone to the good news, and as you do so, your deliverance will come. You'll be delivered from that affliction. Brothers and sisters, until next time, God bless you. May his light shine upon you. Shalom.